Welcome to this video about berberine for diabetes, weight loss, and more. This video is for you if you want to improve your blood sugar levels, if you're wondering whether berberine can help you lose weight or not, and if you want to know how berberine compares to metformin. These are all the great, great reasons to watch this video. Here's what we're going to cover in here. We're going to cover the benefits of berberine, followed by how berberine affects diabetes and insulin resistance, how berberine compares to metformin in different criteria from blood sugar to insulin resistance to cholesterol, triglycerides, and more. Then we're going to talk about does berberine work for weight loss, and if so, how well. After that, we'll talk about dosage, how much should you take, as well as possible side effects experienced from berberine. But before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I'm a personal trainer who specializes in working with people who have diabetes, type 2 especially. I'm also the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Type 2 Diabetes Reversal Secrets. If you want to learn more about different supplements for diabetes, I've actually created a special report just for you called um, the four best and eight worst supplements for blood sugar. You can download it uh, by visiting this link on your screen, www.fitnesssolutionsplus.ca slash yt dash berberine. This link is also in the text right below this video, so you can just click there. What are some of the benefits of berberine? The most common benefit that people look to get out of berberine is better blood sugar levels to manage their diabetes, usually type 2. Now, in addition to that, another common benefit is for women with a condition called PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. That condition is with for usually premenopausal women who have high insulin levels, which cause high testosterone levels as well, and as few other abnormalities. Now, berberine has the potential to improve uh, hormonal profiles in women with PCOS. Another common benefit of berberine is lower cholesterol levels as well as triglycerides, better heart health, and a reversal of fatty liver to prevent any kind of liver damage. Um, now, how does berberine affect diabetes and insulin resistance? Well, one study um, titled this, Berberine and the Treatment of Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis, looked at that, and they concluded that berberine lowered HbA1c by 0.72%. If you are a diabetic or you're caring for a diabetic, you probably know what HbA1c is. If you're not, then let me explain. HbA1c is also called, called glycid hemoglobin. What that is, is the average blood sugar over the last three months, okay? And so it looks like 0.72% is not a very high number, but that's not 0.72% out of 100. The official diagnosis for diabetes happens at an HbA1c of 6.0%. So that's potentially 0.72% out of 6%. So out of that, it's not bad at all. That's really, really good. Is it the best? No, it's not the best, but it's pretty good. Uh, the best are actually listed in the report that I mentioned earlier. Uh, now, how does it work? How does berberine improve with blood sugar? There are three different, different mechanisms. One potential mechanism is increased insulin secretion. In type 2 diabetics, typically what happens is initially they have excess insulin, but after they've had excess insulin for a while, the pancreas loses its ability to make more insulin, and so insulin production starts to decrease. What uh, berberine does is improves the pancreas' production of insulin so it's able to release more. Another possible mechanism is improving insulin sensitivity or decreasing insulin resistance. Ultimately, insulin resistance is like insulin, quote unquote, knocking on the door of the cells, and yet the cells cannot hear the message of insulin, so they don't let the sugar out of the blood and into the cell. By decreasing insulin resistance, sugar comes out of the blood and inside the cell, whatever the cell may be, whether it's muscle or liver or heart or something else. And the third possible mechanism is the reduction in inflammation. One possible causative factor towards diabetes is chronic inflammation, and berberine helps reduce that. Now let's talk about berberine versus metformin. What's better? But before we do, I have to make the obligatory disclaimer. I am a personal trainer. I am not a pharmacist. If you want to know what's better for you on a personal level, speak to a pharmacist or speak to a doctor. Okay? Uh, so just very important, make your own decisions by being informed by, via speaking to a qualified healthcare professional. Having said that, there is one study that directly looked at uh, metformin versus PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, and again, the reason they looked at it in PCOS is because a lot of women with PCOS also have insulin resistance and high blood sugars. And here's what they did, the researchers. 
they recruited 89 women with insulin resistance and divided them into three different groups. Group number one received berberine and something called ciproterone acetate. That's a natural compound given to women who have PCOS to improve their hormonal profiles. So we'll just call it CPA for short. Group number two received metformin plus CPA. Group number three received placebo plus CPA. And this, was, uh, this, this went on for three months. The researchers collected a bunch of data and analyzed it. Here's all the data they analyzed. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just block out certain pieces of data to highlight those. First of all, fasting plasma glucose. In BBR stands for berberine, MET is metformin, and PL is placebo. So the berberine group uh, lowered their fasting plasma glucose by 0.61%. Not bad at all. Again, that's not 0.61 out of 100. That's 0.61 out of 4.97. That's a pretty high number. The metformin group lowered their fasting plasma glucose by 0.49, and the placebo group lowered it by 0.44%. So the overall winner, a very clear winner, is berberine. The researchers also looked at something called the OGTT, which stands for Oral Glucose Tolerance Test. What is that? The Oral Glucose Tolerance Test measures how high does the blood sugar go after a meal. So before they did this study, they gave them a meal, and then within a matter of a few uh, you know, minutes to hours, they measured their blood sugar, and there was a peak of 7.82. After three months of taking it, the berberine group only had a peak of 6.93. And you can see the rest of the numbers for metformin and placebo. And so the difference in oral, in oral glucose tolerance tests before and after three months of uh, either berberine, metformin, or placebo in berberine is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.89. In the metformin group, minus 0 0.70. And the placebo group, not, not much at all, 0 0.18. Okay, again, a clear winner for berberine. They also looked at something called HOMA-IR which is actual insulin resistance. That is how much insulin is produced in response to a meal. Um, and so the berberine group was able to drop their insulin resistance by 1.83%. The metformin group had what was slightly better at 2.1%, and the placebo group lowered it by 1.02%. Now, on the surface, it looks like the metformin group won. However, look at the pre-test uh, the, the pre numbers. The metformin group actually started a higher level of insulin resistance. So they start, started at 4.92 compared to 4.38 for the berberine. So because they had a lot more to drop, they did drop more. But their final number was still higher than the berberine group. The berberine group finished at a insulin resistance level of 2.55, whereas the metformin group finished at an insulin resistance of 2.82. So who's the winner here? It's not quite known, so it's more or less of a tie. Okay. Um, they also measured total cholesterol. So there's the berberine group, metformin, and placebo. The berberine group lowered their cholesterol by 1.2, metformin group 0.69, and placebo group about the same as metformin. So it looks like metformin doesn't really lower cholesterol beyond um, anything in the placebo group. Okay, so again, clear winner for berberine. And what about total uh, triglycerides? Um, triglycerides in the berberine group were lowered by 0.4%. Metformin group 0.17 and placebo actually a little bit better than metformin. Again, a clear winner for berberine. Okay, so these are all the great benefits of berberine. So one question that frequently comes up is, in addition to this, does it also help you lose weight? And that's what one study wanted to find out. The study is this. The effect of berberine supplementation on obesity indices, a dose response meta analysis and systematic review of randomized controlled trials. The short answer is no. Berberine does not help with weight loss. But then some people say it does help with weight loss. So in, and if so, how do you interpret that? So how much weight can I expect to lose with berberine? So there is one study that directly looked at that. And here's the title, Effect of Traditional Chinese Medicine Berberine on Type 2 Diabetes Based on Comprehensive Metabolomics. And here's what they looked at. Body weight in the berberine group versus the placebo group. Over a three-month period, the berberine group lost 1.7 kilograms. Uh, that is about four pounds or so. The placebo group lost 1.5 kilograms, about you know three and a half pounds. So not a heck of a lot different than placebo. Um, and overall, four pounds in 12 weeks is not a heck of a lot. It's just about zero point you know a quarter pound a week. Um, not very much. Not very impressive. Okay. So overall, berberine does not help you lose weight to any great extent. Now, if you are going to take berberine, it's not enough to know what you should take. You should also know how much you should take. Um, 
And to answer that question, most studies range from 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams per day in divided doses. So you don't take the whole thing at once, you break it up throughout the day. Now, that's a pretty big range, 1,000 to 3,000. How do you know where you, uh, where, where you stand and how much you should be taking? I discuss all that in my report about uh, the four best and eight worst supplements, as well as in my book, Type 2 Diabetes Reversal Secrets. It's a bit beyond the scope of this particular video to go into how to determine the, the appropriate dose. Now let's talk about the possible side effects of berberine. Just because it's natural doesn't mean it's healthy per se, although it doesn't mean it's unhealthy. A lot of natural things will kill you. For instance, poisonous mushrooms are all natural, but they're still going to kill you. And just, just like everything, every, just like many things, uh, everything has a side effect. So does berberine. This, these side effects are not common, by the way, but they do exist and you should know what they are. One possible side effect is diarrhea. Another one is constipation, flatulence headaches, and stomach pain. Again, these are all possible side effects of berberine, not common, but they do happen. If you want to delve more into supplements for diabetes, for insulin resistance, I've created a special, um, a special report for you straight from one of the chapters in my book um, on, on supplements. And if you want that special report, just visit this link, www.fitnesssolutionsplus.ca slash yt dash berberine. This link is also found in the text right below this video, so if you want, just feel free to click there.